In this video series, I'm going to teach you how to quickly make stylized rocks for games. In part one, I will take you all the way through the modeling, sculpting, and texturing process. And then in part two, we will bring our rocks into Unreal Engine, where we will set up our material to have moss blending on top of our rocks, controls for our rock colors, and also world aligned masks for some extra detail. If you want to take a look at the assets or get quick access to the rock shader in Unreal, you can grab the project files on my Gumroad. A link will be in the description. Okay, so starting out in Blender, I'm just going to add a cube mesh to the scene. We want to go to our modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface. Let's crank this up to six. And then we can just apply that modifier. Add a new modifier and we're going to look for displace. If we create a new texture here and then go to our texture tab down here, and we're going to change the type from image or movie to a Voronoi noise. Let's change the size down to something like one. And the distance metric, we're going to go to distance squared. And let's just adjust the intensity until we get something a little less harsh. If we go back to our modifiers tab, we can go to the coordinates drop down. If we change this to global and then duplicate the rock with shift D, we can move around the scene until we get more rocks with the shape that we want. We can even scale the rock up or down to add in more detail. Okay, I have three basic rocks here. I'm just going to focus on one rock for this tutorial, so I will delete these two. Let's go back and we want to apply this displace modifier. Next, we can go to the sculpt mode and we want to actually first in object mode, selecting the rock, we want to go to apply, apply all transforms, and then we can head back into sculpt mode. Once in sculpt mode, I'm going to select my scrape brush and up here in the tools on the right hand side, we can create a new brush based off the scrape one by clicking these two pages here. And let's just call this something like planar brush. If we make sure this shield icon is on, this brush will be saved next time we open up this project. Let's go down here and under advanced, I want to check on normal and plane next to original. We can bring the normal radius down to something like 0.3. And if we just right click in the scene, we can set the plane offset to something like 0.01. And now if we, if we sculpt over our rock, we're just going to start flattening out some of these planes. I'm just pressing down in an area and then spinning in circles until the, until it stops flattening. And we just want to get some nice flat surfaces for our rock to start. Okay, we have the basic rock faces defined now. Let's turn off normal and plane. And now we will remesh once more and we're gonna go to something a little higher. Let's try 0 0.005, see how that looks. This works for me, it's a little high, so you can just adjust this number to something that your PC can handle. And now with our brush, we are just going to start scraping away some of these edges where it's a bit sharp and defining a little more of a damaged rock shape. So not all the edges are perfectly sharp. If we want to see a bit clearer what we're doing, go up here to the viewport shading menu. We can just turn on cavity and that gives us a better idea of what we're doing. If you want to learn how to create game assets from scratch, start to finish, including lighting and portfolio presentation, check out my tutorial on creating a game ready asset from scratch. Link will be in the description. Okay, that will do for me for now. We don't want to add too many high frequency details. We want the ability to be able to scale this rock up and down. So we can create larger rock formations with it or smaller ones. So having a lot of high frequency detail will destroy our ability to do that. A basic rock like this is perfectly fine. I'm just going to turn off the cavity once more and go back to object mode. Let's rename this cube to rock underscore high and we can duplicate it with shift D and rename this one to rock underscore low. I'm just gonna isolate the rock underscore high now and we're gonna decimate this to make it a little easier on baking so it's not so heavy. Let's try point one. And if we F3 and search for shade smooth, see what it looks like now. 
I'm just going to up this to maybe 0.3 to avoid any of the weird shading issues. And that looks good enough to me. I'm going to apply this decimation modifier. And let's go back to our low poly one and isolate this. And we're going to do the same thing. We want to decimate this, but we want to get much lower with it. So let's try 0 0.001. And if we go into wireframe, we can see how that's looking. And that looks pretty good to me. Maybe even 0 0.002. I think I'm going to stick with 0 0.002. Something I found is that if I go too low on the decimation with the low poly, I do get some weird face shading in Unreal. So I want to keep it somewhere in the middle. So I'm applying that modifier now and we can go back in to viewport shading and let's start cleaning this up. So we want to look for anything which might cause issues in the shading. So if we F3 and shade smooth and just have a quick look around, you can see here, this would be an issue possibly. So I'm just going to grab this vertice and this one up here, and then we can merge at last. Let's just keep looking for problem areas. Something like this I don't really like either. It's a very thin triangle. So I'm just going to grab this one, grab this one and merge at last. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. Let's now unwrap our low poly rock. I think I can just go straight through the middle here. So I'm just selecting edges. If I hold down control and click, it will choose the shortest path between my last edge and the edge that I clicked on. I'm just trying to keep as straight a line as I possibly can while going all the way around the rock. I have a loop selected all around the center of the rock now. If we right click and do mark scene and then select all with A and U and unwrap, if we go to our UV editing, you can see our islands now. It's not perfect, but if we quickly assign a checker map, you can see that the UV checkers are not too distorted and stretched, and this should work just perfectly fine for a simple rock. I'm just going to quickly assign a material for this rock, MT underscore rock, so we have the correct texture exports in Substance Painter, and let's export this mesh as the low poly. We're exporting as an FBX. Now we exported the low poly, let's do the same with the high poly exporting as an FBX. Okay, they're both exported. Let's head on over to Substance Painter. So here we are in a fresh project file in Substance. Let's go and create a new project. I'm just going to search for the low poly mesh of that rock. Let's set our document resolution to 2K for now and hit OK. So our low poly mesh is now in Substance Painter. If we go over to our texture set settings, we're just going to bake this by scrolling down and hitting bake mesh maps. In here, in our high definition meshes, we want to open up the high poly rock. Let's put our output size for our bake to 2K as well. And we want to turn on some anti-aliasing. We can leave match as always, as we just have one rock and the naming is the same. And let's hit bake selected textures. With our texture maps now baked, we can have a quick look and see if there's any issues with the rock, which it does not look like it. Looks like there's a pretty clean bake. So let's quickly texture this rock. I'm going to create a new base layer and just calling it base. Let's turn on the roughness and bring this up to somewhere around 0.9. And for our color, I'm gonna set this to an orangey hue. And then we want to just add a small little bit of saturation. We don't want it pure white and black. So a little orange in the rock and somewhere around midway is fine. Let's duplicate off this layer. I'm just gonna call this base variation light. And let's bring up the value on the color. And if we right click on it and add a bitmap mask, I'm going to search for grunge. And the grunge map that I am looking for is this grunge map 004. And we're just going to assign that. And then we will add a filter. And the filter we're going to add is a blur slope. We can play with a blending mode. Let's try minimum. I'm actually going to stick with blur and let's just crank this intensity way up. We can play with the tiling and seed on the grunge map. So let's just adjust the tiling. I want to bring it down a bit more so it's not so noisy. Put something like this. We are currently at 0.67. Let's just make this an even 0.7. And then we want to bring down the opacity on this layer quite a bit. Let's duplicate off this layer and call this one base variation dark. And we're just going to set the blend mode to multiply. It looks like nothing is happening now. That's because the grunge map is placed directly over the previous variation light grunge map. So if we go into our dark variation grunge map, we can just quickly click on seed and change that seed. And then we get the dark layer showing through as well. I'm going to bring this opacity down as well a little bit. Do something around 11, 15. 
Let's grab the variation light layer and duplicate that again. I'm just going to place it over the variation dark. And let's just call this edge highlight blurred. I'm going to crank the opacity of the layer all the way back up so I can see what's going on and just remove these grunge maps. Right clicking, I'm going to add a bitmap mask and I'm going to search for curvature and assign my baked curvature map. And then we want to add a levels to this mask and we want to isolate those edges. So now that we have those edges isolated, let's add another filter. And I'm looking for the blur filter. And we can up this intensity quite a bit. So we have kind of like a nice glowy effect almost around the edges. And I'm just going to bring down the opacity slightly to something around 60%. Let's duplicate this edge highlight blurred layer. And I'm just going to call this edge highlight sharp. Remove that blur mask and then play with the levels until we make it even slightly more isolated. Maybe somewhere around here and then bring the opacity of this one down even further to something like there. If we hit the C key, we can cycle through our single channels, or we can go up here, click this drop down, and I'm just looking for the roughness channel. You can see our roughness all over is exactly the same value, and we want to add a little more variation to that. So going through our previous layers, we are going to adjust the roughness a bit on each layer, just so we have some variation. So for the variation dark and variation light, I'm bringing the roughness down a little bit, and on the edge highlight sharps, I'm also going to add a little more roughness where it's worn away. Something like this is fine. Okay, we have our rock all textured. In part two, we will create a quick moss material, bringing everything into Unreal Engine, set up some world aligned moss on top of our rocks and some additional material controls for our rock. So stay tuned and I will see you in there.